Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to PM Personality Profile. My guest tonight, a woman who has resolved to make a positive impact in rural development. She is a research analyst with the African Economic Research Consortium, a senior lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School, Dr. Patience Asawe Abo. She is the founder of the X Glow Foundation and a gospel musician. Good to see you, Doc. Good to see you too. How have you been and what have you been up to? I've been good. I've been busy. Making um, life meaningful been, for the less privileged, I guess. The purpose <laughs> of my living, yes. <laughs> yes. yes. How yes. has it been? Um, it hasn't been easy, but it's been fulfilling. Okay. I, I guess I can say that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Let's start with what you stand for. Yeah. Humility, integrity, courage you say that makes a good leader yes i i, I think so i believe um, like all other people who believe in leadership everything rises and falls on leadership and mm -hmm. for you to be able to take up that kind of responsibility you must be courageous because mm -hmm. it's not all times that you'll be able to influence people mm -hmm. to do what you want them to do you need exactly. courage yeah. there are certain certain decis uh, decisions that you will not be able to take as a leader if you do not have courage mm. I also believe to be able to motivate somebody and inspire people, they must believe that you are real. Yeah. And so integrity is very, very important. You must be what you say you are. You tell people you are that, you are that, and then later they find out there's another personality aside this one you are portraying. You will not be able to really inspire anybody with that kind of multiple mm -hmm. um, personalities. Yeah. And so integrity, I believe, would also help any leader at all to inspire people to do what they want to, leadership is about insp inspiring people, motivating people, yeah. getting to effect change. Definitely. And with integrity, you are able to easily do that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Your love for community work is out of this world. What's the motivation, especially to empower girls and women? Yeah. I have always told everybody I do that to help myself. Okay. That's, that's the only thing that gives meaning to my life because. Okay. Um, if you have read a little bit about me or if you have watched any of my interviews, you realize that I always keep saying, I had no right to be here. Wow. I had no right to be here. I mean, most of you were born, I'm sure on your, the day you were born, one week after there was a celebration, <laughs> there was an outdoor <laughs> ring, Pojemo, Christine, and whatever name they give to it. Okay. Some of us were not born like that. Okay. Some of us didn't have people clapping and jumping that there's a baby that has come. Some wow. of us came to this world with people, everybody frowning. Why, why, why didn't she, she just die? My you goodness. Know? Uh -huh. Nobody welcomed you. So wow. if you happen to survive, Mm. That there must be a reason why you survived. Definitely. And so you must find that reason and pursue it. And mm. that's just what I'm doing. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. People love children. Children yeah. come into the world. Yeah. And everybody is happy. How come someone will be this sad baby, because the baby, baby has arrived? <laughs> this baby Tell was, me they didn't bring this. joy at all. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> no, I think um, if a baby arrives and the people who brought the baby were prepared for the baby they will be happy they were actually expecting the baby mm -hmm. then they will celebrate the baby <laughs> right in my case i was not expected um i was not needed at that time oh. maybe if i had come later <laughs> the have story would have been different, different. <laughs> but this one arrived at the very wrong time uh, my mom was too young Okay. My dad, of, 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 of course, was equally too young. And so that was not the plan at all. all. And then I showed up. <laughs> so there was no Pojemo. <laughs> There was no outdoor, there's no christening. Oh my goodness. See, my grandmother threw the names at me, left the patients, <laughs> where they were all of them. She pointed them up <laughs> and she gave the name. Everybody, every, everybody who hears my name is Patience. The first question, are you patient? I said, the name Patience is not for me. <laughs> it's for my grandma. She needed Patience to take care of this baby. <laughs> so the meaning of the name has nothing to do with me. My goodness. No, no, no. Are no, you no. patient? <laughs> you see, I knew you were coming to that. The name wasn't meant for me. So it didn't have any impact on you? I couldn't afford to be patient and wait on a lot of things. I needed to move and impatiently to get whatever I thought I needed to get 
because so patience would have kept me a long way behind. <laughs> but now I need it. Now now it's okay. Now I can I you can, can I patient. can leave my name yeah. patience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. But of course you're doing some great job with the X Glow Foundation. We will talk about that. But first, uh, tell me, I know you grew up in the north, mm -hmm. but you were born in Accra. Mm. Um, how, how did it happen? Yeah, so my mom was schooling in Accra okay. when she had me. Okay. Teenager. Um, after a while, of course, um, if you knew anybody from the northern part of Ghana, you realize it wouldn't be easy for a teenager to survive the society, the mm -hmm. stigma mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, and so she had to move out of the community where the, she was known. Okay. So she moved back um, to the north okay. with me. Okay. And uh, so that's why I ended up in the At north. At what age? We left Accra when I was still in nursery. So I guess I should have been around four or five years old. Mm, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you had all your growing up? From primary school to GHS. Mm -hmm. At that time, mm -hmm. in the olden days, it was JHS. Okay, yes, now it is. Oh no, it was JSS. JSS. Okay, now it yeah, is junior JH, school. JHS. Then Sometimes I get confused. <laughs> Before you, it makes had me feel so old. Yeah. <laughs> you had <laughs> SSS in Accra. You in came Accra. back to yes, Accra. Yes, I came back to Accra. Okay. Uh -huh. So let's talk about growing up in the yeah. north. How was it like? Oh, the north is beautiful. The north is very cultural. Um, we live by norms and beliefs and values. That's the good thing I like about growing up in the north. The north, everybody's child is everybody's child. Definitely. They can catch you up and beat you up mm -hmm. uh, for misbehaving. Nobody needs permission from your, your parents, mm -hmm. even though things have changed okay. these days. But mm -hmm. that was the kind of community in which I grew up. Um, and it was, it was lovely. You ate from anywhere, you ate from any house. And so, yeah, you got, you got to sneak out and play, even if they ask you not to play. <laughs> so I had a very interesting childhood, regardless of the mm -hmm. other stuff that were going on in my house. I found a way to, be, to have a very happy childhood. <laughs> yeah, I found my own ways. W which part of the north do you come from, precisely? I actually come from the Upper East region. Okay. Strangely enough, I've not lived there. I've rather lived in the northern region okay. but my parents both parents come from the upper east region okay where a exactly? very interesting village called Kayoro. Kayoro. 20 minutes drive from navrungo okay yeah so you speak kasem kasem okay the Quentin. heavenly language kogara okay. uh, that's all like kogara you just say kogara who are you to okay yeah so you that's also say kogara. kogara it's okay, fine okay that's yeah. nice yeah i'm happy to learn another vocabulary <laughs> it's good to learn languages yeah interesting so um, which of your parents was a teacher my mom your mom mm. so she had to move from one place to another yeah. and she had to take you along yeah how was that the experience? Share with me. Yeah, we, we, I had to meet different people almost, almost, I think maybe every two years we are moving to a different place and so I have to readjust. she was being transferred or something? Yes, okay. she was being transferred. Okay. She was being transferred. And so anytime she was transferred, her handbag <laughs> had to you go the handbag. <laughs> with or without your consent. <laughs> So we kept moving. And unfortunately for all her transfers, they happened to be only in villages. I don't know why they never transferred <laughs> her to a city. So now you know where s -Glow Foundation came from. Villages, okay, so had villages, villages, but exactly. What, what were some of your experiences in those villages? You have some memorable experiences. Yeah, beautiful ones and horrible ones. Mm. So uh, the beautiful ones being the fact that, I mean, you didn't need a fridge to store your food. Just cook and eat and... Uh, Tomorrow we'll find some behind the house. <laughs> and just go again. behind the house and you'll be fine. Okay. Um, the other beautiful one being that uh, most of these villages were Islamic um, communities. And mm. they used to have this thing I loved as a child, okay. the Muslims. Okay. There's this thing they call Yara Yara. Yara Yara. Yara Yara. So they will do, there's this masa. There's something they fry, they call masa. I'm sure those yes. of you in Accra who do not know masa, but masa is a delicacy. <laughs> It's made from a nice one. cereals. They yes. fry it, yes. and then they add fresh cow milk. Mm -hmm. No, no, with sugar. Ah, you are in the spirit. <laughs> they pour it over this thing. They add sugar to it, and oh. then they come out to the open and just go yara 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 yara. Then we all start running. Survival <laughs> of the fittest. You get the whether you've washed your hands or you have not. Enjoy it whilst it lasts. <laughs> Those were my most beautiful days in the village. Yara, yara. It was, 
I can't mess it. My ears were so sharp. <laughs> Even if you whisper, yara, yara, I will be dead. I yeah, enjoyed myself. It's nice, the village actually. is nice. Uh, you could steal some stuff from your mother's room and go behind the house and you do, uh, when should we do role playing and mm -hmm. we cook our mm -hmm. own fake mm -hmm. foods and those things. Yeah. I don't see that anymore. Yeah. But those things made me enjoy my childhood. Okay. Yes. Wow. Yes. But the horrible side of the village. <laughs> was the fact that we, I remember we went for, we went to some, one village. Mm. No car came there until a market day. Market day. Wow. And even on the market Imagine. day, the car that came carried both human beings and animals. <laughs> so you had cattle in one side, on one side of the car. The human beings were now trying to perch around the animals. Goodness. And you only get to see that on a market day. Wow. And so my brother was very ill, mm -hmm. the one after me, mm -hmm. and there was no car to move us from that place to the nearest town, which was Damango, yeah. to the, that was like a district at that time, mm -hmm. to the hospital. Wow. So you, whichever way you will get to survive, you just have to survive till a week when a car comes. Which village is this? Mpaha. It was called Mpaha. My goodness. Yeah. Now I'm sure things would have changed. Now maybe cars will go there, but those days cars mm -hmm. were never there. Okay. And my brother was almost like dead Goodness. by the time the next car will come, yeah. will come to take us to the hospital. Wow. And so there was no health care. Mm. Um, the nearest place was Damango, which I'm talking, and it's like miles away. Yeah. And you get to go there only once in a week. When it's market day. When it's market day. So what happened to your brother? Uh, we had to find a way of moving somehow, get a motorbike, get somewhere, move on onto a, a bicycle with a sick child. Oh. And um, it was really horrible. Those were just horrible. Oh, goodness. Horrible, horrible days. Goodness, yeah. I'm so sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. So you attended um, Our Lady of Fatima. Primary, Primary. yes. That's in Tamale. And then you also, at some time, you were in Yape. Yape, yeah. Tell me about those experiences. Yeah. Uh, Our Lady of Fatima Primary was when my grandmama who I said named me by herself, Patience <laughs> Wejewo. Mm -hmm. She finally moved and um, came to the north as well. So I was living with her and that was when she was living in Tamale. So I lived with my grandmother. Okay. And so I went to Our Lady. Mm. And um, that was in the city. That was in Tamale. So yeah, yeah of course, then it was, it was okay. And then later my mom, who lived in Yape, mm -hmm. came to pick me to Yape. Okay. And that was a whole completely different place. They spoke a different language. Mm. It was a smaller town compared to Tamale, and so I had to adjust. So they spoke Gonja? Gonja, okay. yes. So mm. I now have to change my Dagbani, which I was speaking in Tamale, Tamale, and learn a completely new, very strange, I had never heard Gonja in my life. Okay. <laughs> and to learn the language. <laughs> yeah, that took me a while. Okay. Because without, if you didn't understand the language, they, the kids around could just beat you for not understanding the language. <laughs> They just blame. Uh, they are speaking and they say, you are I, speaking back Dagbani, Mambuwumda, Manabe Kanga. So like they will just beat you up because what you are saying, you are not communicating. So I had my own share of beatings in Yape to learn the language by fire. And, uh, and that helped to learn it very quickly, I can tell you that. Yeah. So I learned Gonja with, with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I learned Gonja. Yeah. <laughs> And Yape, Yape, I think I grew up mostly in Yape because from Yape, that was when we moved to Mpaha. Yes. And then from Mpaha, we came back to Yape. Okay. So I finished my whole childhood in Yape. In Yape. So Yape is really the base. How yeah. was Yape? Yape was interesting. Yape, Yape has like, is divided into two, the elitist, the, in mm -hmm. quotes, mm -hmm. those who were educated lived at a certain area. Okay. And then the actual indigenous also live by the, it has a river. Mm. I think it's the, it's the White Volta. The Volta Lake flows through here. It's a fishing okay. Okay. community. Mm. So mm. The, the indigenous live just by the river. Okay. And then those who were just transferred there to do one job or the other, okay. they also live. So we lived at where the educated people were. Mm. They called that place quarters. Okay. They built government quarters for yeah. government workers. Okay. And you would have to walk one mile to where the indigents are, and mm. that is the only source of drinking water okay. in that community, the river. Mm. So we swam in the river. Wow. Animals drank and eased themselves in the river. And, the same and then the same water. river is where we fetched our water from. Your There's no pipe. Water. There's no pipe. I'm yeah. sure it would look like Milo. Sometimes. <laughs> it, depends, it depends on the, 
the time. season. Okay. Yes. yes. Well, those were interesting moments. Yeah. Yeah. So you completed your primary school in Yape. Yape. And then you finally came back to Accra, to Nungwa Secondary School. school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How was secondary school life? I'm sure Accra yeah, is quite different, different yeah. from the north. You know, initially from Yape, when I at uh, GSS, when I was choosing my schools, mm. I didn't really even know the schools. But the thing is, I only knew that I would go to secondary school in Accra. <laughs> That's all you wanted. Whether the schools were <laughs> uh, day tree. schools or they were what level, I don't even, I didn't even understand. <laughs> but I chose the schools anyhow. <laughs> so I chose uh, Laboni Secondary School as my first choice. Accra girls second, and then I, I forgotten the third choice. Mm. But my I got a distinction from uh, for my GHS, okay. so I got my Laboni Secondary School, okay. my first choice. Okay. Then I got to Laboni Secondary School and realized it was a day school. Okay. At that time, you actually wanted well, a boarding. Yes, but, but where would I be living? <laughs> <laughs> I had no address, so <laughs> where would I be to be going to this day school? You uh -huh. know, so that that was how. I looked, I was searching for a school, mm. and then I happened to know, my mom knew one distant relative in Nungwa Secondary School, and he said, oh, my, the results were good. I mean, okay. I'd get six, mm. I'd get seven. If okay. you had a single distinction, you could get any school you yeah. wanted. But Nungwa Secondary School was, if only I don't mind, you wanted they it. could take me at Nungwa Secondary School, and okay. I'll get a boarding, a boarding house. Okay. So me, I just moved from <laughs> Laboni to uh, Nungwa, to the boarding school. Okay. Yes, so that was how I ended up in Nungwa Secondary School. But I think it was all um, the plan of God because Nungwa Secondary School did a lot of things to, to my life. I mean, especially with my Christian life. Right. It was the place where I finally met Christ. It was the place where right. I finally said, I am now a proper Christian and I gave wow. my life to Christ. Wow. So it all started in Nungwa Secondary School. Well, tell me yeah. about it. Yeah. The whole new experience. Village girl, back to Accra. Can you imagine? How was it? Imagine this year. <laughs> Coming from Yapi. <laughs> and then I, 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 in Yapi we had our own culture. Mm. We fought. In, by the time they send you from here to here, you fight about three fights on the road before, before you, you get there. Day. Then I get to a crime. People are just insulted. They are just talking, talking. They are not fighting. So it was difficult. They don't How, you are talking to me. Let's just kick it, it off and, and get it over and done with. <laughs> so I was struggling. Ah, somebody could just insult you and go. You can't hit the person. Ah. That was a struggle. Just wasting time. Hey, let's settle it. Get closer. Let's settle this matter instead shop, of the shop. plenty talk. <laughs> so it was really a big problem for me. <laughs> I couldn't cope. See, my uniform, in Nungwa, our uniform is like a dress like this. <laughs> I wore a short under my Anybody who has been to Nungwa Secondary School, would, if they are watching, they will tell you. I always had a short under my dress, ready to fight. <laughs> so that was Nungwa Secondary School. First year, SHS 1. <laughs> and, and my shorts was big. And so it will always... Is the dress like this, and they'll be wondering, You are so tiny, yet it looks like from this way you it's are like big. huge. They didn't sure know that you had prepared. just in case a fight broke up in the middle of the <laughs> street. I have to be ready anytime, anytime. But nobody wanted to, fight. so I was on my own. Aisha, it was difficult too. Trying to now learn when somebody then they are talking, then you talk, then they talk. Accra people, you Accra people, talking. you can talk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then they are just talking, 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 talking. So I learned it uh, anyway, in a anyhow. very difficult way. So I learned to adjust to Nungwa. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so you learn to speak Ga. I said I won't speak Ga, <laughs> and they will not understand why I'm li I'm in Nungwa and will not speak Ga because I could speak Chi. Mm -hmm. Even before I came from Yape, right there in Yape, I was speaking Chi. I don't mm -hmm. know how I learned it. Okay. But uh, anytime any national service persons came to the north, I was the only person they could communicate, and that made me feel special. Oh yes. Because I could speak Chi and then and then English. And so then yeah. Uh -huh. So okay. I'm, in the, I'm always in the middle of every conversation. Then I got here and they are saying I have to speak Ga. <laughs> <laughs> As if the fight, the absence of fighting was not enough. <laughs> now I have to learn how to speak Ga. Goodness. So the Ga, yeah, as for the Ga, when you speak, Nungwa is Ga throughout. Okay. So yeah. I understand the Ga. Mm. I said any time they were speaking Ga, because I was looking for a fight, I said I will speak back. <laughs> I will speak Chi. So, so that if you dare come me, and look for your trouble, <laughs> you will get. That it. was how I never got to speak Ga. <laughs> <laughs> 
I never spoke it. You never spoke but it. But I understand everything you're saying. Okay. I understand. Wow. Because they were insulting me all over the place, so I had to understand. <laughs> so I, I, understood, I understood. So they never yeah. gave you the opportunity to actually engage in the any fight. fight. It didn't happen. They, they, they were too fear. No. <laughs> all they wanted to do was talk, engage, talk, dialogue. No. <laughs> So it had to die. That attitude, they killed it. That's why I said Nungwa Secondary School was one of the best things that happened, that happened to me. So gradually, the skill was dying. <laughs> I wasn't fighting, so I had to remove the shorts now and be dressed like a lady and not be carrying the shorts everywhere. <laughs> I learned how to be a lady instead of climbing. I was used to climbing trees. and uh, So I'm like a tomboy, kind of. <laughs> In the north. In the north. And then you have to learn that. Yeah. Riding bicycles you know, share and butter. all of you that. You know share butter is yeah. made from share fruits. Yes. There's a fruit. Yes. So we will usually climb the trees to shake the, the fruits. You mm -hmm. eat the fruit and then the seed is what we use for share butter. Yeah. So I was used to jumping on trees like that. <laughs> and then you come to Accra. Nothing like that for you. But were you doing any sporting activity in Nongwa? Uh, my mom trained me in sports. So I always tell everybody. The chasing, she would chase me in the area to beat me up. <laughs> I learned how to be an athlete by default. So I was a natural athlete. Because every time I'm causing a problem at home and my mom will not let, like, you know, mothers, you are supposed to just, a child has misbehaved. Wait, when she comes, so you can just grab her. My mom. No, she has, at that particular moment, she must beat you or else she might forget about it. <laughs> so. She would chase me in the neighborhood. Like, by now, you will meet us at the third gate. You saw where you were. <laughs> I would be running and my mom would be behind every day. <laughs> so it was enough exercise you are and quite training. Stubborn. I was, I don't know why. I honestly do not understand why I was that stubborn. I'm always in one trouble or the, or the other. other. And my mom is always chasing me. She won't let me be. <laughs> then people will be shouting, Auntie Magina, so baby fear. Jan, no baby fear. Baby fear, no abuna said that be. Me cheno. Me bruno. We'll be running in the whole area. Oh, goodness. Because my mom's point was that, see, I want to show her that I'm stubborn. She but she wants me to know that she's, she's not really that older than me. <laughs> she's more we are stubborn always, we, are, we are both growing up. <laughs> so let's do this growing up. At Nungwa. I was an athlete. Yes. An athlete yes. in Nungwa. Yes, so and I played football as well. Okay. I tried basketball. Mm. That one didn't work. It didn't work. I tried really? a few. They put me in the school team, all right, but I wasn't performing. Me now, I knew that I wasn't performing. Okay. So I stopped. Mm. But I played football. Okay. And I, I, I was an athlete. I did long distances. Okay. Anytime there was cross country, I am the girl. Wow. Uh, if it is 1,500, those longer ones, okay. I'm not a sprinter. Okay. Yeah. What kind of a student were you at Nungwa? I think after the first year, my troublemaking had actually dropped. Okay. So if you were looking for troublemakers, no, definitely you wouldn't, wouldn't find you wouldn't find me. Mm. You wouldn't find me. So um, and then if you were looking for the goody goody two shoes girls to you won't be there. I will not be there. I was somewhere in, sort of in the middle. Yeah, I will go SU, but if there was also entertainment, <laughs> you will be there. I could appear. <laughs> somewhere in the corner and just make a few moves and then and go back and sleep for the next morning's <laughs> SU. Uh -huh. So I was, I was in between like that. The thing is, I like, I like dancing. Yeah. I love music. Okay. And so I didn't really care what music, for as long as it was music it and it, it was danceable, yeah. I can't resist. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes my SU uh, uh, mates will come and say, patience. That one is for is worldly. You don't have to. I said, you people give me some. I just gave my life to Christ. <laughs> so give me some space. I'm just, I need some space to recover. <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, this is a girl who could jump out of the window and go and watch Amachi Dedi or Nanampedu <laughs> if they came for with a concert. Those days they used to come for concerts in, in Yabe the, in the village. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Those days they would come to every community and they were doing and all these uh -huh, musical yeah. concerts. Yeah. And my mom would say, no, you are not going. I said, okay, no problem. <laughs> so I get to my room in the night. I open the window, fold my dress under my armpit, jump over, <laughs> go and dance, come back, change at the window, wear my pajamas, jump into the room, I come and sleep. sleep. <laughs> One day I was actually caught. Okay. Mm. Your mom caught you. I don't know mm. how. I don't know who to. Okay. Maybe she got a tip off. Oh. <laughs> now I'm beginning to, I need to ask her. How she, how got, she got to 
uh -huh. I actually get me on that day. So I came back from this. That one was Sibo. There were these gang Sibo, Sibo brothers. brothers. Yeah. I went and danced <laughs> by 2 a.m. I was now coming. And this is a JSS child. Though. Can you imagine? Then I got to the window, threw in my <laughs> the things I used to go and dance, threw in through the window. I had changed into my pyjama, jumped over the window. Usually my room, the lights are off. Mm -hmm. I got into the room and then they switched on the light. For you. Welcome, my madam. My mom was sitting on my bed. <laughs> like a ghost. The thing is, ten, looking back at the window, should I jump back? Should I stay? <laughs> to be or not to be? And you know, I, I told you how my mom can beat. The She's a teacher. Kenan is, oh yeah, that night. But because I knew I was wrong there. Eh? That particular day, I endured the pain. You didn't cry. For the whole community to know that I jumped through the... <laughs> The ones that I usually cry and give a dead, those ones were when she was beating me by heart. Though. But this one, I knew I was wrong. So she would hit me and say, mm, I'll keep it to myself. You won't hear it. I endured the pain. So when I came to Nungwara, that thing was still, you yeah, know. Yeah. So I told the SU people, this is the background. <laughs> So take it easy. Once a while, if you see me at entertainment, you know that it is. It. I'm still working on it. You understand? <laughs> entertainment small, SU small, small. <laughs> then Nungo was interesting. Wow. Yeah. Was interesting. What would you say was your biggest challenge in Nungo? Ha! Ah, my biggest challenge. Usually, what the days I didn't like mm. were Saturdays okay. and weekends, like mm. when parents will come and visit, and they are bringing all this home to. I felt like an orphan. Yeah. Nobody people. visited me. So your mom was still in Yape? She was in her Yape. Okay. Minding her business and living <laughs> her life. And um, so on weekends, when people were really, you have aunties, people were coming, coming. then they are carrying food. food. You know, they'll come and call so so and so, so, so and so has come, or your mama has come. Yeah. Then they'll carry their food. You and they come and everybody is displaying their food and they are inviting you. But oh. you know you cannot eat this food because <laughs> you don't have any to share. Yeah. So my most, the days I never liked as yeah. a boarding student mm -hmm. were weekends when uh, family will visit and they are bringing food yeah. and uh, I just had to stay and, wow. and watch them enjoy themselves. So yeah, those will be the, my difficult times when I didn't, I felt... I've been left in the school and um, nobody is coming to look for me and um, it, it feels as if you're, you were some orphan, mm -hmm. even though my parents were alive. Mm -hmm. uh, once in a while, my dad will usually pass by from work. Mm -hmm. He will just bring you money. Was of course, he he's a Accra man. Or he was he also would, in the north? He cannot bring you food. Sorry. Mm -hmm. what, your dad, was he also in the north? Oh, or my he dad was is in here. He's in my Accra. My dad lives in Accra. Okay. Yeah. They are not, my mom and my dad are they not, are they are not together. Okay, yeah. And so you know how mm, that is. It's usually. They both have their own families <laughs> and uh, you are just the, that piece hanging around. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Were there financial challenges? Mm, I wouldn't say that. As with financial challenges, I think most of my difficulties had to do with more of um, um, affection and uh, lack of like you don't feel loved mm -hmm. and those you feel rejected mm -hmm. those things but not finances strangely mm -hmm. enough mm -hmm. I, I had a lot of people give me money okay. i don't know i think people found me very fascinating anybody i met could just give me money wow that one i was very blessed wow. i mean i had favor i had a god i had god parents who lived in laboni mm -hmm. uh, mr and mrs um, adwashon god bless those this couple they are amazing mm -hmm. They, they were, whether my dad was giving me money or not, they were still giving me provisions and mm. give me, gave me money anytime I was going back to school, wow. right from secondary school till I even completed university. Wow. Those people were still giving me money. Interesting. Aside my dad. Yeah. From Nungwa, then to University of Ghana, to university then of Ghana. to uh, South Africa, yeah. and University of, I think, Co Cape, Cape, Cape Peninsula, Peninsula University of Technology. And then yeah. also in Southampton, yeah. in the UK. Yeah. How was the experience like? Well, uh, my uh, <laughs> there's something very weird about my education. So it has never really been that straight, straight, straight. Okay. From this to this, so no, this, it yeah. looks that way, but yeah. it wasn't <laughs> because after secondary school, mm. those days you will stay home for more than a year or two before your results will come. will come for you to now move on. So after wasting already staying home at, for two years, in the third year when I went to 
the school I had decided my mom had convinced me to go to the teacher training college mm -hmm. because uh, they had the slogan Teach teaching is a stepping stone mm -hmm. teaching is a stepping stone and most when you go into the teacher training college they were going to be giving you allowances yeah. and so you will be able to take care of yourself from that time onwards you mm -hmm. didn't need money from your parents mm -hmm. so it, I applied to a teacher training college okay. went for an interview got admission took my admission, my prospectus, came back to Accra. And this teacher training college was in Tamale. Came back to Accra to show my admission and everything to my dad so that he'll give me money and I'll buy my stuff and go back to the to school. school. Etchana, ene, etchana, come back tomorrow. The thing is, my dad wasn't happy that I was going to a, a teacher. He wanted, I did science in okay. the secondary school and he thought I should probably find something within the health sector to train either nursing laboratory science as he mm -hmm. was and he was a laboratory scientist okay so he wanted me to find myself in that space but i chose to listen to my mom and go to the and go to teacher training, training. so i could tell he wasn't really enthused about, about this whole teacher training college and so that i don't know but that could have <laughs> been the reason why the whole come back tomorrow by the time i got the money to buy my stuff and go back to Tamale. Everything. They had given my place to another person. Wow. And I carried my chop box with my uniform oh, and everything. Oh, I had my oh, cry oh. because I had sat home <laughs> for two years. Me, the whole community must know that finally I am I'm going, to, going school. to school. And then you are coming back. The next door, until you went home, you are not just saying, go to school. <laughs> then I go to the school. Oh, you they know? said I cannot register. Why? Oh, the deadline was yesterday and they had to... You know, people are usually on the on waiting the, yeah. list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If someone doesn't come. I said everything. I begged. I cried. Oh, no. I, they said there was no way. There's no space at all Wow. to take me. So I had to carry my box back to my mom's uh, house. And at that time, she was living in a compound house. So you can imagine the whole house, everybody sitting there. You are bringing your chop box back. Uh -uh. Oh, that was sad. <laughs> you didn't go to school again. What happened? Ah, patients won't yell no chance. Shikuru. <laughs> now you have to be answering everybody by the door before you finally get to your room. Come, the wahala of living in a compound house. Eh? When your problem is everybody's problem. <laughs> it was tough. It was really difficult. Oh, I can so imagine. I didn't get to go to school. Oh. The principal assured me that I should come back the next year. Um, this time around, uh, they will keep my place now because I have I had admission. Mm. So next year I didn't need to buy forms again. So Sister. The next year, I didn't want trouble. I bought the form again. Went back there for an interview. They saw me as the ah, patients, you were here last, last year. I'm like, yeah, but why did you buy the form? You already had admission. I said, no, I still wanted I to just be sure. Trouble. This time, even the, at the interview, I did, they didn't ask me any question. They only made me sing. <laughs> and then they told me uh, I should come later and pick the new admission letter. I got there when I heard the admissions were out to pick my letter. They told me to check the board if my name was there first. I checked the board, Aisha. If I could get spectacles, I would have won like two to so check, check again because name. I couldn't your find my name the, the second time. How? Checked, checked upwards, checked downwards, checked diagonally. I couldn't find my name. Hmm. I went to the princess. So, oh, patience. Your surname starts with A. I said, yes. I wrote your name. I personally wrote your name. Go back and check. I said, sir, maybe you should check your list because my what is on the board? He said, that's not possible. Then he picked his, the admission list, went through, went through and said, ah. There was another patient. Her same name also starts with A. Oh, yeah. She was the one they gave the admission to, not me. Not you. Wow. I missed the second time. Two years rolling in the same training college. Oh, no. And that was when scripture came to mind. <laughs> the Bible came in handy. If you go to a place and they reject you, shake off the dust <laughs> from your feet. And move, move on. on. Don't look back again. <laughs> that was how my training college ended. This time I decided I won't even beg again. <laughs> so I moved, I moved on. So from between the uh, secondary school to university, it wasn't that small. There was a Red Sea and desert and <laughs> everything I had to cross. Okay. But yeah, a long story short, finally I ended up at I mean, the University of Ghana yeah. to read biological science. Oh. Let's talk about your ex glow Foundation. Yeah. Was there a particular um, incident or experience you had in the North that actually motivated you? To put together this foundation yeah um, a lot of things like I explained those villages I lived in I remember in my GHS 
at a point, just before I wrote my BEC, mm. we had no teacher in the school, okay. except our headmaster, who taught every subject, including French, that he couldn't speak. Okay. So it was tough. And we, you had to literally force your brain to study. Mm. And life was really, really difficult. Then I also remember in one of those villages, I, was, I sat in classrooms where there were no desks. Mm. There, no, you, you, there was nothing to sit on. And so we used uh, the blocks, the blocks that are used in building a house, yeah. we, you put it in the classroom and you sat on the block and you put your book on your lap. Mm. And that was how we wrote. Wow. And so with all that, I always told myself, and I, I don't know, for some strange reason, whilst I sat on those blocks mm. and I wrote from my lap, I could see myself. I was always picturing myself that one day I was going to be somebody very important and I was going to come back to this village and I was going to make life very comfortable for students so they don't sit on the floor yeah. the way I sat. The floor. So I believe that is where the S Glow Foundation Came started. From. Yeah. Wow. How I always it? said mm. I will come back to villages and I will make learning easier okay. for children in such places. Mm. And I also come back to villages, not just to help students learn in schools, but to be a role model because growing up we never saw Mm -hmm. um, role models. Mm -hmm. you, there was nothing to look up to. I think all, the only profession in my community that I saw every now and then were teachers. Yeah. And uh, those days, teachers, their conditions of service were, was really nothing to mm -hmm. write home about. Yeah. And so, you really want no to be, motivation. it wasn't something you were aspiring for. Yep. And so I said I was going to be something more than just a teacher looking the way they mm -hmm. were looking. <laughs> I was going to look like something, some child would look at me and say that one day, I, I also to want to be like her. Like and because I had sat on those blocks and written from my lap, if I spoke to those children, I can speak their language. Mm -hmm. They will understand that yeah. it is very possible yeah. that you can get out of that floor mm -hmm. and become something bigger. Yeah. And so those were my, my motivations mm -hmm. for starting the Eslo Foundation. Foundation. Patience, I say where about. She's my guest tonight, and I am so touched by her life story. Remember, she is a research analyst, and her research interests in healthcare governance, health service management, health policy, and socioeconomic effects on health outcomes. When I return from this break, she'll be telling me about her career experience, and she would also be telling us about her dancing skills, her love for music. I mean, I'm just wondering how, what a blend. She'll be telling us all of that after this break, plus her family values and lifestyle. Stay with me, I'm coming right back. <laughs> Welcome back to PM Personality Profile. My guest told Dr. Patience Asewe Abo, and like I told you, her research areas include health service management, health policy, socioeconomic effects on health outcomes. I mean, these areas are very critical to our own lives or our, our well-being. What are some of the findings you've, you've, you can share with us from these areas? Um. Uh, I think the most recent ones currently that I'm working on will be have to do with uh, healthcare governance, um, where I, I identified that uh, hospitals in Ghana, which had governing boards, mm. like they had board of directors, mm. they were performing better okay. compared to hospitals that did not have any board in place. So that is to support the assertion that Go governing boards actually influence the performance of organizations. Just as it happens in the corporate world, mm. the same thing happens even with uh, hospitals. Okay. And so you realize that within the legal framework in Ghana, it is only teaching hospitals who are mandated by law okay. to have a governing board. Mm. So if you are not a teaching hospital, you can choose 
by your own discretion if you wanted to have a board or not. And yeah. that is not helpful. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. that, 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 that's something very disturbing I found out. I've been making noise about it. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it looks like the noise is not, <laughs> it's not loud <laughs> enough. But it is very important that there, there, there should be some legal, uh, uh, how would I even put it? some manda ma mandatory uh, laws or mandatory um, um, policy directives okay. for hospitals to think more about governance okay. because some of the challenges we are having in our healthcare delivery could just be a problem of leadership. Okay. And so if we are able to fix that, we might improve most of the patient outcomes that we are dealing with. Okay. Yeah. So as a lecturer, how would you describe your relationship with your students? Hey, my students, we are, we, are, we are okay when we have to be okay. <laughs> we are cool. <laughs> when we have to be okay. Are you cool like that? <laughs> Not all the time. <laughs> but do I look strict? <laughs> Can you imagine me strict? The thing is that <laughs> sometimes these students, um, um, you want to be nice, then some of them do not know at what point there is a boundary, let's break here yeah. and be serious. So, and some, when I, so granted. usually I'm, I'm a different person in different classes. Okay. So if you came to my MBA class. or MSc class or PhD students mm. class, I'm a very nice person. Oh, we can even do finish and sink and Together. do stuff. Mm. But when I go to the undergrad, where they do not know boundaries, yeah. uh, that place, <laughs> that is where my headmistress cap <laughs> comes in handy. And I wait <laughs> with all seriousness. Headmistress. Headmistress. <laughs> Or is it senior housemistress? Which ones are the stricter ones? The senior housemistress. Both. Both of them. <laughs> so yeah, if you are level 300, level 400, level 2, those ones, they think I am the strict person who doesn't even laugh. <laughs> I don't smile. But I mean, with the other level, depending on the maturity level. of the students, mm -hmm. I, am, I am a different person. So I switch <laughs> in between. Yeah. In between, interesting. Yeah. But, but my students, I believe they love me. Have, have yeah. you had your share? Because you know, they say students are bad. I mean, when they pass, they have passed. But when they fail, it's it the lecturer you. that has mm -hmm. failed them. And sometimes they attack you, even physically and even spiritually. I know. Have you had your own unique experience with students? I don't know if they could still see some yape in me. <laughs> they wouldn't Maybe even try. Maybe they can see <laughs> to bring me a fight. I'm yet to meet that person. So as for physically, <laughs> I'm not sure they, anybody has even dreamt about it. But spiritually, the Holy Ghost will handle that one. <laughs> Because I'll probably be asleep <laughs> by the time you are doing those ones. So Holy Ghost will deal with you. <laughs> um, maybe emotionally. Okay. So you receive emails. You receive text messages. Yeah. A student tells you, this is my final year. And you gave me D. Do something about it. Oh, this is not right. Hey, uh, you get all those messages. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can read the email and you can actually get hear the tone of the person <laughs> speaking to you. So I get those emails. Somebody, then they, they send those, I will not respond. <laughs> then sh sh the person, will, he or she would then send another one. Madam, I hope you saw my email. <laughs> I will not respond. Then they'll come back the theater. Okay, please, madam. <laughs> madam, please. <laughs> so they know how to say please. <laughs> that is after I've ignored them like four. Then the, the person will now, so I've, uh, you will be following all that roller coaster. They hype, they lift you up like they're going to drop you. <laughs> then they come back and hold you back and pamper you small just because of <laughs> exams and all that. So, yeah, yeah we go through all the, you read messages. Um, you go to some classes sometimes, you don't know you are talking and nobody is responding. Mm -hmm. You have such days. Mm -hmm. But then, on the whole, I think. I think teaching is my calling. I stumbled into it accidentally, okay. but I believe it is part of my, my calling. I do well. Is it because I get good your mom was evaluation. a teacher? Can you imagine? I ran away from it and, I'm, and you I've, came I've back ended. to it. <laughs> but at least I got to satisfy both my mom and, and my dad, dad because, because I did a lesson okay. for my first degree. Yeah. So my dad saw me in uniform. And my he was saw me taking care of patients in Kolebu uh, for at least one and a half years before I ran away. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I've done both. Okay. I, I, I want to believe they are both now happy and See? they are proud of me. So <laughs> yeah, I did both health and the now teaching. So, teaching. Yeah. Mm. Okay, let's talk about your recognition. I know the recent one was from the chiefs and people of Katsina. 
like for the great job yes, you've been doing. Yeah. How does that make you feel? Amazing. It's my first ever award <laughs> in my whole life. Now, Vrongo, thank you. <laughs> I was really amazed. I was here when the chief of my village, Kayoro, mm. the chief of Kayoro called me, and they were like, I didn't even think they noticed. I mm. didn't think the chiefs and people of that area even noticed. I was just going through my villages quietly and, and I do my donations, I speak to the students and I leave. Okay. I had no idea anybody was even paying attention. attention. So when they called me and said for the all the projects I had been doing within the district, mm. they, they, they thought it was time, they recognized it and mm -hmm. they wanted to give me an award. I was happy. You I mean, the, the happiness had to do with the fact that at least Somebody it is, be, huh, yeah, I didn't think it was anything huge, but oh, obviously it's been noticed mm -hmm. and that made me really happy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, congratulations Thank for you. a good Thank job you. then. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but looking at the north, yeah. and one of the biggest challenges we faced in the north has been poverty. Mm -hmm. And that is why you have taken up this job of empowering uh, people, especially girls and women. Yeah. What do you think it will take to actually minimize the poverty level in that area? A lot. You know, in terms of development, the place is completely backward. Mm -hmm. It's just like comparing Africa to the Western world. Mm -hmm. If you came down to Ghana, okay. the, it will be like compa comparing the northern part of Ghana to the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, we are so, so behind. Yeah. It's not even funny. It's, we are so behind. And so developmentally, there's a lot to do to catch up mm -hmm. with the rest of the country. Yeah. And so that has to be attended to. And we have huge lands. I believe with the lands and the kind of energy the people there have and the, the hard work. Yeah. If even it was just agriculture, mm -hmm. food, yeah. Aisha, it will, it will make a whole lot of difference. Mm. If we just focused on agri in the northern sector of Ghana and be able to pro help these farmers to produce more than they are producing with just the little uh, uh, implement, farm implements that they have, yeah. if we can make it um, on on a large scale i don't know what the agricultural terms are but if we can actually make it huge in terms of agricultural uh, pro, uh, activities in the north it will change lives first of all it will feed people hunger will be when you are not hungry mm. that is when you are able to dream okay with hunger you can't even have uh, uh, we go around saying people should dream big you are only dreaming big when your <laughs> stomach is full when you are hungry you cannot even close your eyes to think of sleeping and dreaming so i think food in the north, food production in the north, enough to feed every mouth there and to be able to feed the rest of the country and then send it out will make a lot of difference. Mm. People can now begin to aspire to be something mm -hmm. because they've been able to feed. Okay. I have gone to villages where I visited to take care of schools. I ended up buying food to feed a whole community. Wow. People are hungry. Wow. And I'm not talking of Somalia or some war-torn country yeah. i'm talking about ghana mm. if you saw some of our pictures from my project just by looking at the picture you understand what i'm saying people wow. are hungry wow so i believe food is the the most something that we can readily do yeah agriculture mm -hmm. when we are done feeding let's open our mind at the end of the day everything is achieved in this world by a change of mindset and the mind can only be changed if you educate people yeah. so education will then be the next Thing to look at when we are done eating mm -hmm. so that people's mindset will shift mm -hmm. people will know that um, somebody just uh, uh, going to school and dropping out at a point to get married and become a fourth fifth sixth wife how would this person be able to take care of the children that will come up so get the person to a place where they can at least take care of themselves mm -hmm. before they enter into these other uh, aspects of their lives life. and so that they don't bring up children mm. that they cannot take care of and then these children will end up becoming a burden to the rest of society yeah. and we are all sleeping with w w metals in our windows yeah. we are prisoners in our homes it's because amazing. right from the beginning we didn't take care of some child mm -hmm. that child is angry mm -hmm. that child will come to your house and, and take it by force take it by force yeah Definitely. And I, I'm so glad that you're doing this job. God yeah. bless you for Amen. the kind of work you're doing. I'm sure Professor Bo and they one girl, have two one boys. girl, two boys. Yes. Okay, wow. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure they are proud of you. I want to believe so. <laughs> <laughs> I want to believe so. And I know yeah. Prof has been supporting you all the yeah. way. He mm. has. Mm. I told you he allowed me to save my salary. Yes. And um, so he takes care of every other thing. That's, That's by wonderful. itself. 
It's a lot of it's support. Great support. Yeah. And then wow. I leave the house, I go to these mm. villages, mm. I leave him to take care of the kids. Mm. What other support will I should he now carry me? <laughs> 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 That's enough support. Maybe you should invite him to the studio. One to the of studio, the one of the, to share what, how he feels when I'm gone. <laughs> because I'm always out, and then he has to do the babysitting oh, and all goodness. that. So you're Even, a gospel musician. I am. Your, I am. Your stage name again? Wejewo. Wejewo. Mm -hmm. Wow. If you Google Wejewo, there's nobody in this world called by that name. I'm the only one in the whole world. The nobody whole shares that world. Name. Wow. Yeah. Where Where you mm. Which among your tracks is your favorite? Mm. All of them. But what? But mean? the most famous song that I know people know a lot in Ghana will be a song uh, with the title Membisa. Mm. I think that one was well promoted, and so a lot of people so know the song, but they don't know who sang the song. Okay. So you usually even sing in tree? Oh, I do tree. I do dagbani. I do hausa. Oh, wow. Um, and then English. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. how many tracks do you have, or how many songs do you have to I your have, credit? I have, uh, I have one album, I have two singles. Okay. If I should put all the songs together, I should be about 18 songs, so oh, wow. almost 20. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Which of them is Some your favorite? Some of which are under my bed. Kuzo Kuduba. Kuzo Kuduba. Uh-huh. Kuzo Kuduba. Kuwa Ezo Eduba. Kuzo kuduba abende yesu ya hi Abende yesu ya hi ya bani Kuzo kuduba abende yesu ya hi Abende yesu ya hi ya bani Nachimbiye Pasaraye That one is what dialect? Dabani Okay Kanyikuraye Come here, Natinya, now when in the young Shaletima. Ah, Mana, when it's a hagila, man, the hagosa. Come here, Natinya, now when in the young Shaletima. Ah, Mana, when it's a hagila, man, the hagosa. Yabani Kudi, ah, Yabani Rahi, ah, Yabani Chau, Shay Yabani Kome. Okay, uh -huh. <laughs> thank you so much for welcome. talking to You're us. We're really grateful for allowing us into your life. Thank you so much for the good work. May God bless you. God bless Viewers, you. thank you so much for watching. Same time next week, we'll be bringing you another edition of PM Personality Profile. My beautiful dress was made by Needle Trade Designs. You can visit their showroom at 36 West Loop Tessano or call them on 0543-196451. 0543-196451. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. And remember, you can see how fit she looks. I'll be getting the opportunity to work with her and learn some skills to also stay fit. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Usually about three times a week when I'm very busy. Okay. Otherwise, I make sure that even if I don't go for a walk, you I, I must get, get my steps. Your seven I must get steps. Down. Like this. This, yeah. down. Okay. This, down. This, down. Okay. This, down. Uh -huh. This, down. This, down. <laughs> this, down. How many times every day? <laughs> <laughs> At least if you get like 15 minutes, then you do the rest. My goodness. Yeah. Huh? Then, I want to do our side side. Uh -huh. So we'll go this way. Up. That way. I'm coming away. Up. So. Like this. The opposite leg. So you try to touch your toe. You are, you are trying to shape up, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, this way. Uh, okay. Uh, that's right. You get it. <laughs> that's right. Uh -huh. Right? Good. So, try and touch the middle so that we are stretching here. Okay. This way. Mm -hmm. 
can you touch the cloth? Is okay. that hard? Uh-huh. Okay, you, uh, can you feel the uh, sweat behind uh, your leg? Yes. Are yes. you sure? Yes, 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 I can. <laughs> <laughs> Up. Up. Breathe. Uh, you get to breathe. Okay. We are going down again, slowly. Stretch out, push your butt up. That way. Down. Ooh. Down. Try to see if you can touch the floor. Ooh. Stretch out your legs and your butt. I can feel it. Awesome. Ooh. Up. Up. <sighs> there. <sighs> so we wow. know where our focus is. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. So with our legs that way. You are pushing uh -huh. up. Down and squatting. Yeah. Okay. You, like this. Tighten it up in. The way you are you let it go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's go. You're doing well. Oh, yes. <laughs> you're in a hurry to get up. <laughs> we'll stay down for a bit. So fast. Ah, I'm so fast. So here go last one. Go. Stay. Stay. Yeah. Up. Good job. Thank you so much, Doc. You're welcome. Doc, you're so fun to be with. Thank you. I really enjoyed I had, myself. I had fun as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And God bless you. Bless you too. Viewers, enjoy the rest of our programs.